Oh, yeah. yeah. You tell me when you're ready. Okay. Good job, Ethan. Have mercy upon us. 
Thou that takes away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, our most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has given thy only Son to be unto us both a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life, give us grace that we may always most thankfully receive that his inestimable love, inestimable benefit. And also daily endeavor ourselves to follow the blessed footsteps of his most holy life. Through the same, thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first, our first lesson comes from Wisdom, Book Proverbs, chapter 9, verses 1 through 6. The reading can be found in our online bulletin or your personal Bibles. A reading from Proverbs. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servant girls, she calls, from the highest places in the town. You that are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, come, eat of my bread, and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity, and live, and walk in the way of insight. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 34, verses 9 through 14. The psalm is found on page 628 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us read Psalm 34, verses 9 through 14, responsibly by full verse. I will begin. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The young and lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord are like the end of the Come, children, and listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who among you loves life and desires to enjoy prosperity? Keep your tongue from evil speaking, and your lips from lying words. Turn from evil politics to do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Our second lesson comes from the letter to the church in Ephesus, chapter 5, verses 15 through 20. The reading can be found in our online bulletin or your personal Bibles. A reading from Ephesians. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. As you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory Glory to Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? But Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Kids, come on up here. Let's talk. So, how are we doing today? So, have any of you had a vision from God saying you should build a giant boat or collect animals in pairs? No? Okay, I think we're good then. Good. Alright. So, what do I have in here? Who do I have in here? Some bread, right? Holy bread. Well, actually, it's not being consecrated. It's not being consecrated yet. Are you going to eat it right away? <laughs> should eat more breakfast, huh? <laughs> so, why can I? I can just give you this bread, right? Because it's not consecrated, it's just bread. It's just a way. What does that consecrated though mean? A big fancy word. You good in Scrabble. That is holy, yeah. It's changed. It's changed. Because this bread is just it's just regular old, regular old, pretty nasty tasting wafer, really. Um, and there's something that happens, right? We take it from this ordinary bread and it becomes something else. What does it come? What does it become? Well, holy, yeah. We just talked about it in the gospel reading. I know you guys, especially who paying attention to it. So Jesus talks about, yeah, turning into the body. Now, I'm not going to scare anyone here because this is what we adults are going to talk about. Like, does it really turn into the body? That's not really what we're worried about. What we're worried about is that this, this, we take this bread because it's a symbol. It's a symbol of Jesus, right? And that when we take Jesus into ourselves, just like the reading you just heard, when we take Jesus into ourselves, we, we, we become stronger, we, we are given life, we become special, right? And we do it every week. We take it into ourselves. Now, did you know that back in the Middle Ages, they stopped eating bread and we started going away from it? You know why? I'm sure they didn't do it back in the Middle Ages. I'm sure they didn't have the technology. But, but um, why do we go away from you know, With bread, it's really crumbly, right? And so if this is really Jesus, we don't want Jesus falling on the floor and getting vacuumed up and getting trauma. So we went to these wafers because people are really worried about, like, oh, we can't drop Jesus on the floor. That would be bad, isn't it? Right? But, I had a very 
very, very wise spiritual director one time, because I mentioned this to him, I said, oh, they're dropping Jesus on the floor. The people are walking on. People are vacuuming out. And he said, you know, if Jesus is smart enough to get into the bread, he's smart enough to get back out again. <laughs> <laughs> so don't worry so much about the stuff, right? It's not about the stuff. It's about what we feel. And it's about what happens when we hear and when, what happens when that is transformed. The transformation happens in us. Don't worry about the stuff. The transformation happens in us. Alright? So, let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for, for Jesus, our living bread that we get to partake in each week. We thank you for the life he gives us. We thank you for turning us slowly into Jesus. We become a little bit more like him every day. We thank you for our church family and all that we have. And it's in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. All right. I got to do the adult thing now. Yay. Son and Holy Spirit. So there's a nightmare that many priests have, right? I gotta tell you this. Uh, it's not the one where you turn up and you don't have your pants on. It's not that one. Right? So there's, there's actually two nightmares that, that we have. One is that we prepared a sermon on the wrong text, right? And that happens way more than you think it does. Um, the second one is that you prepared a sermon on the same subject that the priest spoke about last week. Especially, that's a supply priest's nightmare, right? And it's especially true in the summer of year B, which is where we are right now, because we spend an eternity in John's Gospel, chapter 6. So yesterday, yesterday I decided to tune in and see what Daniel preached on last week. And, I mean, he literally started his sermon exactly the way that my words were written on the page. And I'm like, oh dear. <laughs> I'm about to rewrite my, uh, my, my sermon. Uh, yes. But it's okay. It's okay. Because being that great evangelical that he is, he took it in a different direction. That Jesus, the Jesus that we consume is in the Holy Scriptures. Right? I hope we remember that from last week. That we consume the Word of God, and as John's Gospel tells us, Jesus is the Word of God. So, that's all very true, thanks, God. thanks be to God, but I want to take this in a more literal direction today and talk about the Eucharist itself. Because the charge of cannibalism that uh, Father Daniel talked about last week was a shocking one. And it's right there in the Holy Scriptures. I mean, Jesus says, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life. My flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. That's kind of weird. But consider how, if you're a first century Jew and you hear this, this is completely shocking. Okay? Because the Torah expressly forbids the consumption of blood. It comes up at least five times in the book of Leviticus alone. You shall not eat anything with its blood. No person among you shall eat blood, nor shall any aliens who reside among you eat blood. It shall be a perpetual statute throughout your generations in all your settlements. You must not eat any blood. So what is Jesus doing? This devout Jew, this teacher of the law, what is he doing 
by asking people to eat his flesh and drink his blood. And the answer, it turns out, can be found in the same scripture. It's in Leviticus. If we dig a little deeper, chapter 17 gives us the rationale for this so called blood prohibition. For the life of every creature, its blood is its life. Therefore, I have said to the people of Israel, you shall not eat the blood of any creature. For the life of every creature is its blood. So we think about this. Any animal will die if you remove its blood. We will die, right? The number one thing we teach our soldiers is in combat trauma ministry, uh, combat trauma, just pack that hole and stop the blood flowing out. We can deal with everything else later, but stop the blood coming out of the person, right? Because for all of our technological and medical innovation, we can do a whole lot with people, but if they don't have any blood in them, we can't do anything. Because the blood is effectively the life force of the animal. It's the life force of all humans. And that life force, according to Leviticus, is given by God. Right? God is life's creator, the creator of all life. And thus the lifeblood belongs to God. God giving you lifeblood is what makes you go. So the prohibition exists because that blood, that life force, belongs to God. And God alone. Nobody can take that. It doesn't belong to us. And so what, do the, what were the Jews taught about blood? Is to pour it on the ground. This is the way they can give it back to God. Pour it into the earth, let it be absorbed by the earth, and go back to God. That's the way they return this life force to the Creator. But this is Jesus' point. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Jesus offers his blood for the life of the world. God is offering God's life force to us. To partake in Jesus' blood is to partake in God's life force, to be renewed, to be become a whole again. So what of the flesh? Right? If we drain the blood from an animal, what we're left with is the meat, the flesh. Now, flesh is generally differentiated in scriptures. We don't get this because in, in English we only have one word, really. But in, in the, the Greek and the Hebrew, there's flesh and there's meat. So, well, there's flesh and body. So. Wherever the body tends to be referred to is that, like the outer form of the person, right? Whenever we talk about body, we talk about the outer form of the person. But to talk about the flesh refers more to the essence, to the nature of the person inside them. So when Jesus asks us or invites us to consume his flesh, he's inviting us to partake in his nature, in the essence of his humanity, right? of, of this sort of divine human God-man to become one with the perfect human. Jesus, as we know, every respect tested as we are, but found without sin. When we eat of his flesh, we are strengthening ourselves, fueling ourselves with the perfect human nature of Christ. That's pretty cool. So through his body broken for us, we are made whole. Through his blood which he has shed for us, we are given life. But the question, the big burning question, is what I was talking to the kids about. It's like, how does that translate to what we do up here every Sunday morning? How does that relate? How does that translate? How is Jesus' body and blood 
made present in the Eucharist? That is a genuine question and one that has caused theologians across the years to uh, scratch their heads. <laughs> and it's been the cause of more than one church split, I'll tell you. So what is happening up here? Is the, is the priest, when I say the blessing, or, or when I say those words of institution, am I actually changing the substance of that wafer and that wine into the body and the blood, the literal body and blood of Jesus Christ? Do their forms look like bread and wine, but actually their nature has changed into Jesus? Is it just a memorial? Simply a remembrance of the Last Supper, the one and only sacrifice Jesus made for all who believe. Are we the gathered congregation? Are we actually the body and blood of Jesus Christ? As we are gathered together, the body of Christ, his church. Those are just a few of the interpretations that circulate amongst Christians on what goes on in the Eucharist. We can't even call it the Eucharist. Some people call it the Holy Communion, the Divine Liturgy, the Mass, the Great Offering, or the Lord's Supper. We can't even agree on the name. <laughs> in a few minutes, we're going to say the words of the Nicene Creed, right? This is our, this is our statement of faith, we believe. And yet, nothing in there is going to tell you what's going on in the Eucharist. We can go to the back of our prayer books and look at the catechism, which you should all do, by the way. It's actually pretty good reading. You can go to the back of the prayer book and look at the catechism, and it's still not going to give you a very clear definition of what is going on in the Eucharist. Right? So, partly, one of the sentences says it sounds like a remembrance, and the other one implies the true presence of Christ. So which is it? Why can't we be clearer? Well, friends, let me put you out of your misery. Because we're Episcopalian, and that is how we do Anglican theology. We're never definitive on anything. <laughs> but in seriousness, in this church, we do not tell you what your relationship with God must look like. In this church, we accept that we do not know how, with all my theological training, I do not know how that you individually need to receive Jesus today. Some call that wishy-washy. Some say we don't have a coherent theology. That's just not true. The answer to, as to whether Jesus is present this way or that way <laughs> is yes. Jesus is present this way, and Jesus is present this way, and Jesus is present this way. Yes, to all. Jesus is always present. And we must never, never be so bold as to say that Jesus can't show up this way. That Jesus doesn't do this. That God isn't this way. Because we just don't know. And we can't limit, we can't place limits on what God can do. Because we are human and we just don't know. It is called the divine mystery. Mystery in all you know, in all theologies, it's called the divine mystery. We just don't know. But the one thing I will say for our Episcopal Anglican theology is to say don't lose sight of the Paschal mystery by focusing on the stuff. Right? The stuff. The bread, the wine, whatever it is. Stop looking down at the stuff. And look up and thank God that we get to partake in this meal. And if you need any more convincing, look at the Gospel of John that we read from today. 
Have a look through the Gospel of John and please find me. Find me the Last Supper narrative. This most Eucharistic of Gospels, it's not there. John does not include the Last Supper narrative in his Gospel. And I believe the reason that he does that is because he recognizes that while the Eucharistic meal is vital, it's not about the stuff. It's not even about the meal itself. It's about what the meal signifies. That Jesus sacrificed his life for the life of the whole world. Jesus gave his blood so that we might have life. He gave his flesh so that we might be strengthened by this perfect nature. And our response, as John would have it, is to say that we believe. Through this sign, we are made whole and come to eternal life. That is a joyous thing. That is the mystery. Amen. Amen. And now let us stand together. Let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page 327. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. seen. We believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not by any, of one only with the Father, and of 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 the Father, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became a for the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under conscious fire. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in the court of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
may agree in the truth of thy holy word, and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, Michael Hun and Jerry Lamb, our bishops, and Daniel, our priest, that they may both, by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, that they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, Greg and Michelle, our governors, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy words that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Rosa, Nancy, Ruben, Ernesto, Jose, Robert, Hal, Charlie, Patsy, Gracie, Connor, Rick, Bruce, Joshua, Luis, Mondo, John, Linda, Hopeton, Armando. In the church's weekly cycle of prayer, I bid your prayers for the Northwest Deanery. In the military, we pray for all those serving home and abroad. We pray for those in law enforcement, all firefighters and first responders. Please add your own petitions and thanksgivings at this time, either silently or loud. Pray for all those who have been affected by the rain and flooding here. Pray that we, they may find hope, that they may find communion, that they may be touched by God. We pray for all those who have and all those who are assisting us in the recovery. Pray And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed in this life, part of this life, in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of St. Luke and all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Now using the form on the bottom of page 331, let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us 
that we may be light in thy will, and walk in thy grace, to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Please show some peace to those close to you. So given that I uh, am uh, not really a frequent flyer here, I've asked Lorenzo to uh, uh, make the announcements today. Do you have the announcement? I'm going to remember what I wrote. <laughs> Good morning, congregation. Good morning. Good morning. As you can see, I'm barely moving. I fell down last Monday and hurt my shoulder. You know, there's times where I think about it and I say, well, why, why does things happen, you know, especially to me? And I remember uh, when I was a little kid and I fell and I hurt myself, my mom in Spanish said, es la cruz que te tocó, meaning that's the cross that was given to you to carry. Because right now, that's how I feel like I'm carrying a cross. Compared, but that doesn't compare to what our Lord and Savior uh, carried before he gave his life to, for us. So, just a reminder. Cottage Crafters still meet here every Tuesday at 1, from 1 to 4. Every Thursday at 7.30 a.m., we meet at Buttersmith, formerly known as Village Inn, for our men's breakfast, the men's fellowship breakfast. The shoebox ministry, uh, the items that are loose to, you know, to make up a shoebox, the deadline was for today. But you have till the 29th to still bring a completed shoebox to our Narthex. I don't know if you've seen them in the entrance. We have a few there. Um, if you need a list of the items, a copy of the items that are re recommended, let me know and I'll be happy to email that to you or I'll provide you a printed copy. Okay. Um, August 21st, Connie Vincent's family is going to have a yard sale. It could be from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. On the bulletin, I put her address on there. So uh, if you all want to go and help out the family and maybe have a moment, uh, some kind of memory of Connie Vincent, I'll be there, okay? Uh, let's see. Brisket. If you see a special on brisket, uh, we need brisket for our country fair. We have up to today, up to today's date, we have five vendors that have signed up. We have a DJ, and hopefully I'll be with karaoke if we can work something out, because the Wi-Fi doesn't reach out to that area, but Jeff and I are going to work on that, right? Yeah. Um, let's see. Country Fair. We still need volunteers. So if you know any, any young people, because we need young people that have energy, <laughs> that are willing to help us, you know, please, please, please send them over. Have them talk to me. And then we can place them somewhere. Okay? It's going to be a great Country Fair. I feel it. I feel like we're, we're going to be very successful this year. Can't wait to see the docks and races and the mixed breeds. Yes, Chef Chef. Um, I just want to remind people to uh, keep some flyers. Yeah. And distribute. And also, um, do you need water also? Do you need to sell water? So, bottled water? We probably will. Okay. So, we're probably going to need uh, some water, bottled water donations as well. 
Um, what else? Am I missing anything? Huh? Brisket. Brisket, yeah, so bring brisket. Oh, any birthdays or anniversaries? Yeah. Yesterday was Jorge's uh, birthday. He turned 41. So um, let's pray for him. Um, we have a book of coming here. Is it 8, 8, 8 30? Two years working here, and I'm already memorizing the pages. <laughs> M380, everyone. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, all ye heaven and hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost.
and with our prayers, we lift them up unto the Lord. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection to open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee, and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. All glory be to thee, O Lord our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth, and didst make us in thine own image. And of thy tender mercy, this give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take me, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sin. Do this, as often ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee the memorial that Son hath commanded us to make. Having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and our bodies. Grant we beseech thee that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole church may be one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory and be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Oh,
Hallelujah. Christ on Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. O Lamb of God that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. Thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink of his blood, that we may never more dwell in him and be in us.
Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 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 